The Sunday TV Mass is brought to you by the Catholic Diocese of Sioux Falls with support from the Catholic Diocese of Rapid City, the Catholic Family Sharing Appeal, the generosity of viewers like you, and from a grant from the Catholic Community Foundation for Eastern South Dakota, advancing the work of the church through supporting its ministries and parishes and offering donors a wide variety of arrangements by which they can achieve their charitable and financial goals. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. peace be with you. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, God desires to fill us with all good things, and all we need to do is open our hearts to receive those graces. So as we enter into this Mass, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, 
the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Chronicles. In those days, all the princes of Judah, the priests and the people, added infidelity to infidelity, practicing all the abominations of the nations and polluting the Lord's temple, which he had consecrated in Jerusalem. Early and often did the Lord, the God of their fathers, send his messengers to them for he had compassion on his people and his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God, despised his warnings, and scoffed at his prophets, until the anger of the Lord against his people was so inflamed that there was no remedy. Their enemies burnt the house of God, tore down the walls of Jerusalem, set all its palaces afire, and destroyed all its precious objects. Those who escaped the sword were carried captive to Babylon, where they became servants of the king of the Chaldeans and his sons, until the kingdom of the Persians came to power. And this was to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, until the land has retrieved its lost Sabbath. During all the time it lies waste, it shall have rest while 70 years are fulfilled. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord inspired King Cyprus of Persia to issue this proclamation throughout his kingdom, both by word of mouth and in writing. Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth The Lord, the God of heaven, has given to me, and he has charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever, therefore, among you belongs to any part of his people, let him go up, and may his God be with him. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, God, who is rich in mercy because of the great love he had for us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, brought us to life with Christ. By grace, you have been saved, raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For by grace, you have been saved through faith, and this is not from you. It is the gift of God. It is not from works, so no one may boast. For we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for the good works that God has prepared in advance, that we should live in them. The word of the Lord. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to Nicodemus, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the verdict, that the light came into the world, but people prefer darkness to light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come toward the light so that his works might not be exposed. 
But whoever lives the truth comes to the light so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. One of my favorite things to do is to tease people, and especially those who love to be teased and can tease back so well. Whether it's priests or deacons or seminarians, whether it's staff, whether it's our servers, and especially teasing Father Morgan in front of the servers is one of my favorite things, but also my family. I grew up in a family of lots of teasers, and so we always look forward to those opportunities when we get together to razz each other, to tease each other. Of course, it's all in good spirit, but boy, do we love to recall those old stories. So today, you're going to get one of those stories. It's when two of my brothers were little rascals. They were real young, and it was a very hot day. And Grandma decided that my dad and my uh, grandpa deserved a little cool, refreshing drink, an adult drink in a bottle. And these two little rascals were to take it out to Grandpa and Dad and give them a cool, refreshing drink. Well, as the evening went on, day went past, Mom was getting the boys cleaned up in the bathtub that night, and there was lots of belching and laughing. (laughs) What happened to those little bottles? They were later discovered in a place that was very hidden, their playhouse. (laughs) They went into the dark where they thought they would not be caught to do something they were not supposed to do. Doesn't that resemble all of us when we try to hide things that we're not supposed to do? And we learn this from very young on, of course, One of the first words I sometimes hear, especially when kids get to be about two years old, they can obviously be learning before then, but they they learn the word no very well. They want to do their own thing. And how often we struggle against that broken inclination. We want to do things our way. We hear in our reading today this beautiful depiction in the gospel about how the struggle of humanity is to turn to the ways of darkness. It says here so beautifully, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe in him already has been condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the verdict, that the light came into the world, but people preferred darkness to light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come into the light, so that his works might not be exposed. But whoever lives the truth comes into the light so that the works may be clearly seen as done in God. My brothers and sisters, this Lenten season is a time for us to see if there's any darkness that remains in our life, anything that is hidden that we may have held on to for years, some grudge against a sibling, a co-worker, a neighbor, that we've never really let go, something we're clinging to because we've been hurt, and yet God desires to forgive 
us for clinging to that. He desires to bring us into the light and to be free. I find in my own life, the more I live in the light, the happier and the more joyful I am. But we know when there's something bothering our conscience, when there's something we struggle with, we tend to isolate, we go to those dark places so that nobody will see. But God always sees. And one day, all of us will know things as they are. It will all be revealed. And so if we struggle yet with whatever our principal struggles of sin are, gossip or judging, complaining, unforgiveness, uncharitableness, struggles with chastity or pride, all kinds of things, bring them into the light of God's mercy. God wants us to run to him in the confessional, to seek his mercy each day, because he did not come to condemn us, but to save us. And all we need to do is be humble enough to run to the Lord in our wickedness, our, our, our um, brokenness, and just ask for God's mercy to be set free, to have new grace that sustains us to walk in the ways of righteousness and truth and goodness, and to be able to live that beautifully in the world today, no longer needing to carry the shame, certainly not guilt, because the sin is forgiven, but even to forgive ourselves. In order for us to be saved, all we need to do is to let ourselves be saved. God came into the world not to condemn it, but to save it. We see in the Old Testament reading from today the struggle of those in the Old Testament, this recorded in the book of Chronicles, and how they were struggling to not be faithful to God as it relates to the Sabbath. Today, in the world we live in, it seems that many have lost a sense of the sacred for whatever reason. And yet God has been so clear about the importance to come to Mass to receive the grace we need so as to live and empowered by God's grace. What a beautiful description we have in that second reading which helps us really understand how grace works. Brothers and sisters, God is so rich in mercy because of the great love he had for us. Even when we were dead in transgressions, brought us to life with Christ. By grace, you have been saved, raised up with him, and seated with him in the heavens of Christ Jesus. It is in this beautiful gift of faith we hear, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from you, it is a pure gift from God. You and I are invited to receive the beautiful gifts, the supernatural gifts, the supernatural virtues that God wants to give us to rise above the struggle that we all have to go to those places of darkness, to do the things we want to do, and then to keep those things hidden from God and others. And yet stepping into that weakness in humility before God and asking for grace and help, we realize we have new grace, new strength, new power. And with that comes new freedom, new joy, new peace. And it is Christ manifest more profoundly in the world we live in. If you haven't had a chance to get to confession yet, I invite you to do that, if at all possible, before we celebrate Easter, to allow ourselves to be freed from anything that holds us back from remaining in darkness and coming into the light. Let's pray for that grace for each other. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, 
Light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit, was incarnate to the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So we acknowledge the incredible love that God has for us as he seeks us out to come to him in humility to receive grace so that we can be empowered by his life and love. We also acknowledge our great need for him, and so we place before him now these prayers of petition. We pray for Francis, our Pope, Donald, our Bishop, and all priests, deacons, and religious, that they may always act in accordance with God's will for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all Christians, that Jesus may clothe them with compassion, kindness, and humility towards all people they meet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in the darkness of unbelief and sin, that God may illuminate their hearts with the one true faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those men and women preparing to enter the church at Easter, that Christ may prepare their hearts to be steadfast and faithful members of his church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of the state, that God may direct their hearts and minds to enact laws that promote the true good of the individual person and society as a whole, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all men and women discerning their vocation, that God may reveal his loving plans for their lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the souls of the faithful departed, that God may grant them the gift of entering into his heavenly kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, in your good and gracious love, we ask that you fill us this day with the beautiful gift of your divine love so that we can draw ever closer to you to receive everything you want to give us so that we then in turn can radiate your goodness throughout the world and experience the delights of being in love with you and others. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may be both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, by the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith that has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin, through the waters of regeneration, to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out without end as we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your, Francis, with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and help and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true in communion with, with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glory ever Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Ma Bartholomew Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this offering, of this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and accounted among those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and prove this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners Hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. i
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be you. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. of 
pray. O oh God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, enlighten our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you with all sincerity through Christ our Lord. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life to your unfailing light. To those who walk in the shadow of death and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. If you would like to receive the leaflet missile or would like to learn more about the Catholic faith, please write to our address, the Sunday TV Mass, 523 North Duluth Avenue, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, 57104. The Sunday TV Mass is made possible by the Catholic Family Sharing Appeal and the generous support of our viewers.